morning. <clears throat> this week, we are going to talk about different jobs for social studies. We are going to talk, we're going to focus on rhyming and sight words for English language arts this week. And we are going to wrap up our uh, information, er, our unit on measurement, where we discussed length, height, and Last, we're gonna compare weight. So we're gonna wrap that up this week for math. So to start, we're gonna take a look at some different jobs in social studies. So last week, we had talked about consumers. And let's review by talking about what consumers are. Consumers are people who buy things. So they might buy goods, such as going to the store to buy some clothes or new furniture or food. Those are all examples of goods. Or they might buy services. So remember, a service is something that somebody does for you. So for example, if somebody comes to cut your lawn or do some landscaping outside, that's a service. If you go to a hair salon, and they cut your hair. That's a service. When you go to a restaurant where somebody else, the chef makes your food and the waiter brings it out to you, that is a service. So a consumer is anyone who pays for goods or services. Now, how do consumers pay for these things? How are they able to buy these things? What do they use to pay, to buy? They use money. You have to use money to buy things. And how does someone earn money? How does an adult earn money? They earn money by, doing, by going to work by doing a job. So this week, we're gonna focus on different types of jobs that people can do. So the title of this article is Jobs People Do. Many people work. What jobs do people do? Many workers use tools. Many workers wear special clothes. So I want you to take a look at the front cover and tell me, what do you see? What is this worker? wearing? What tool are they using? So you see that the worker is wearing a mask to protect their face. You also see them in some clothing, some type of uniform, some blue jumpsuit that's covering their body. And then it's really hard to see, but down here they're also wearing protective gloves. Now, as far as the tool, you see whatever tool they're using is creating these yellow-orange things. These are called sparks. A spark occurs when there's a flame. So the, work, the tool uh, this person is using is a torch, a torch that creates a flame. And they're using this torch to melt metal. Now, metal is difficult to melt. It has to be a super high heat. So the tool that this person is using is super, super hot. Do you think, do you think this job is safe or dangerous? So in general, this job, which is called a welder, this person is a welder, this job is considered a little bit dangerous. But luckily, there's many protective clothing for the workers to use to stay safe while completing the job. Let's look at some other types of jobs. Now on this side of the page, you see a lot of different workers. So we're gonna go over that. Right here, we have a firefighter. Firefighters help keep people safe. They have to wear the special jacket, special pants and helmet and boots to keep their body safe in case they encounter flames. 
Some of the tools that firefighters use are things like fire trucks, which have hoses on them, and other tools like they might have an ax or things like that. So in case they need to break down a door or do all kinds of things, they can. Next to the firefighter, we have a mechanic. Mechanics use lots of tools like wrenches, screwdrivers, and things like that to work on cars and trucks. Next to the mechanic, we have a chef. See the chef is wearing a chef's jacket and a chef's hat. And that's to keep their, their uh, clothes clean. So in, in case anything splatters, um, then their clothes won't get dirty. They have that jacket to wear. The hat is used to keep their hair away from the food. And sometimes uh, chefs or people that work in the food industry, they might wear these things called hair nets, which also helps keep hair away from food. All right, and what does a chef do? A chef cooks meals. So think about what tools a chef might use. If you're not sure, take a look around your kitchen and look at all the variety of tools you have in your kitchen. Hmm. So a chef might use tools like a spoon or a knife or a spatula. They also might use tools like a stove or an oven or a grill. Those are all, all examples of things that chefs use. Now let's look in the bottom left corner. What is this guy? He's a police officer. And what do police officers do? They help keep people safe. You can see that police officers have a very specific uniform. Their uniform will always feature a badge identifying who they are. And police officers use a variety of tools. They use handcuffs, they have cop cars to travel, and they have walkie-talkies and radios to communicate with other officers. The last thing we're gonna talk about is Labor Day. Can you guys say labor? The word labor means work. On Labor Day, we honor America's workers. Labor Day is the first Monday in September. And that is a day that majority of workers in America have the day off to just relax and spend time with family. Now I wanna show you this worksheet. Your assignment for social studies this week is to think about the job that you wanna have when you grow up. You're gonna draw a picture of that job and then write one or two sentences describing what the job is, what kind of tools you might need to use, and what your uniform would look like if you need to have one. You could either print this paper out or you could just draw and write your sentences on a blank piece of paper. When you're all done, submit a picture of it to your, through your student account on Ed Network found at bridgeprepreview.com. So now we talked about all, we talked all about different types of jobs you could do. There's also lots of other jobs that are available. For example, my job is a teacher. There's also jobs available in the healthcare industry, like doctor, nurse. There's also jobs um, available in the emergency, in emergency response industry. So things like um, EMTs, which um, work on ambulances and things like that. Uh, those are other options. And there's lots and lots and lots of other jobs. You might be, you might want to be a hairstylist. You might want to be um, an athlete. You might want to be a teacher like me. 
So there's lots and lots of different types of jobs. So you think about what job you want to do when you grow up. You think about what you might have to wear. Like for example, my uniform is a bridge prep shirt, just like your uniform is as a student. And then you think about what type of tools that you might use in that job. All right, now we're gonna transition to, to science. For science this week, you have been talking about energy. For science this week, you've been talking about energy. Energy is something that can cause matter to move or change. Remember that matter can be solids, liquids, or gases. So a solid is something that you can physically hold. So a solid might be like your computer or tablet, whatever you're using to watch the video right now. Or other solids could be um, food or the chair you're sitting in or anything. Anything that you can physically hold is a solid that keeps its shape. Remember that liquids are things like water, things that move and change shape to fit the container that they're in. So water or juice are examples of liquid. And then a gas is something that you usually can't really see, um, and it's usually in something like an aerosol can. So gas examples of gas are air freshener or Febreze if you have that, Lysol spray, disinfectant spray is a gas, or hairspray is a gas. And gases are free moving. They move all around. So remember that it takes a lot of energy to power a city. Energy is something that, we can, that can cause matter to move or change. I want you to take a look at this picture and tell me, where do you see energy at work in this city? Look all around the picture. Where do you see energy at work in the city? You might mention that energy is causing the lights to shine. Energy might be causing the car to move. If you look inside the apartment, you see that there's energy through this lamp. There's energy from the stove heating the pan. And there might be energy causing this TV to turn on. Now we're gonna talk about the different types of energy. Solar energy is energy from the sun. Can you say solar? Solar is energy from the sun. Solar energy heats this greenhouse. And solar energy gives us another type of energy as well. So it heats things, makes them hot or warmer, and it also provides us with light. You'll notice that when the sun is up, out during the daytime, you can see when you go outside. You might open the blinds or the curtains and use sunlight to light up your house. So when the sun goes down, we cannot see anymore. So we need to use electricity to turn on the lights. Heat is energy that makes things warmer. We can use heat to cook our food and warm our homes. Light is energy that lets us see. The sun gives off light. Electricity can also produce light. Electricity is energy that provides power for many things that we use each day. Energy from gasoline is what powers cars and trucks. This morning, did you use a toaster to heat bread? Did you see by light from a lamp? Did a sound from an alarm clock or a radio wake you up? Toasters, lamps, radios, and alarm clocks change electricity into heat, light, and sound. Hmm, let's look at these pictures. What's something that, that lights up the home? The lamp. What's 
something that uses electricity in the house to cool things down, cool the room down or cool people down. The fan. What's something that uses electricity that keeps your food cold? The fridge. What's something that uses electricity that heats your food up? The stove or, or oven. Great job. So throughout this week and some of next week, you're gonna continue learning about different types of energy. But for now, we're all done with science. Now that we're done with science, we're gonna go ahead and move on to English language arts. This week in English language arts, we're gonna be focusing on rhyming words. Remember for words to rhyme, they need to have the same middle and ending sound. Keep in mind that different letters can make up different sounds. So for example, so for example, the word caught, C-A-U-G-H-T, caught, and pot rhyme, but they use different letters. Well, some of the different letters. All right. We're gonna start this off by playing a little rhyming word game. So stand up, stand all the way up. Let's play the rhyming words game. Play with me, my friends. Words that rhyme begin with different sounds but have the same sound at the end. I need three words that rhyme. I have two already on my mind. When I say a third word that doesn't rhyme, you sit down. When I say a third word that does rhyme, stand up. I'm thinking of these two words that rhyme. Bug, hug. Bug, hug, pig. Bug, hug, fox. Bug, hug, rug. Now I'm thinking of these two words that rhyme. Cat, hat. Cat, hat, boy. Cat, hat, tree. Cat, hat, set. I need three words to rhyme. I have two already on my mind. I'm thinking of these two words that rhyme. Pig, dig. Pig, dig, girl. Pig, dig, wig. Pig, dig, rig. Now I'm thinking of these two words that rhyme. Bet, set. Bet, set, run. Bet, set, get. Bet, set, chicken. Let's play the rhyming words game. Play with me, my friends. Words that rhyme begin with different sounds but have the same sound at the end. Let's be friends. Yeah. Now we're going to read, we're going to listen to a short story about a chicken who can't lay any eggs. In the story, there's going to be a lot of words that rhyme. As we go through the story, I'm going to be pausing it and asking you to tell me which words rhymed. Remember that rhyming words have the same middle and ending sound, but they can begin with a different letter. For example, hat, at, and bat, b, at, rhyme, hat and bat. So 
The word pat, pat, also rhymes with hat and bat, p at. Now we're ready for the story. The story is called Chicks Sick. Hey. Today we're gonna to be reading Chicks Sick by Kyle Mewburn. Chick sick. Chick clocks. Chick plucks. Tugs worms. Bathes in dust. Sun sets. Time to rest. Into hen house. Sit on nest. Crack of dawn. Stretch and yawn. Lifts legs. What? No eggs. What words there rhyme? Lifts, legs. What? No eggs? Which two words have different beginning sounds but the same middle and ending sound? Lifts, legs. What? No eggs? Legs and eggs rhyme. Am I sick? Clucks chick. Sheep peeks, sheep bleats, chews nests, sniffs chick's feet. What's an egg? asks sheep. Get duck, chick cheeps. Egg stuck, quacks duck. Duck clutches, sheep squeezes, duck clenches, chick wheezes. No luck, quacks duck. Let's get goose. Chick egg loose, honks goose. What words rhyme here? Shake egg loose, honks goose. Shake egg loose, honks goose. Loose and goose rhyme. Shake egg loose, honks goose. Goose shakes, earthquakes, wobbly legs. No eggs, no use, honks goose. Let's call cow. More food, cow moves. Duck gathers, goose feeds. Chick gulps, grit and seeds. Fat chick, really sick. Here's goat, that's the trick. Eggs float, bleeds goat. Run to throw, jump chick under. Cough, cough. Splutter, splutter. What a mess. All soak. Still no egg. Silly goat. Do eggs float? Goat bleats. What's an egg? Ask sheep. Comes a hiss. May I assist? Spin around. Double take. What's that? A helpful snake. Snake grins. Needs a fright. Hide in the hen house. Wait till night. Quietly now. Open door, in snake slithers, hides in straw. Sun sets, chick calls, time to roost. Darkness falls, fork tongue, moonlight, snake slithers, quiet as night. A loud squawk, wakes the farm, wings flutter, snake alarm. Down, down, brave chick goes, jumps on snake, then loudly crows. Your rooster, snake shouts, gives a hiss, slithers out. Away snake hurries, no eggs there, into bushes, disappear. Rooster clucks, rooster plucks, never worries again about eggs getting stuck. Sunrise, day dawns, blue skies, barnyard yawns. Which words rhyme here? Sunrise. Day dawns, blue skies, barnyard yawns. What word does dawn rhyme with? Sunrise, day dawns, blue skies, barnyard yawns. Dawns and yawns rhyme. 
Rooster flutters up on Ruth, lifts his head, cackle doodle doo. So in that story, the chicken thought it was sick because it couldn't lay any eggs. But at the end, we find out that the chicken is actually a rooster. A rooster is a male or, or a boy chicken. It cannot lay eggs. So the chicken wasn't sick. It was just a boy. It doesn't lay eggs. And that story had lots of rhyming words. The very last thing that we're gonna do is go over our math assignment for the week. So this week, we're going to be comparing weight. Take a look at the picture of the boy. What does he have in his hands? In one hand, he has a number block. In the other, he has a big book. Which object do you think is lighter? The number block. The number block is lighter. Which object do you think is heavier? The book is heavier than the number block. The number block is lighter than the book. Now I want you to look down and pick up your paper. Is your paper heavy or light? Your paper is light. Go find something that is heavier than your paper. An example might be a book at your house, a toy at your house, or a backpack at your house. All of those things are heavier than your paper. What did you find that's heavier than your paper? Awesome, now we're gonna move on. You can go put that object away now. Take a look at the screen. Next to the number one in the red apple, you see a picture of scissors. Then you see one, two, three objects to the right of the scissors. There's a paper clip, a book, and a rubber band. Tell me which object is heavier than the scissors. The book is heavier than the scissors. Now let's look at number two in the sun. What object is next to the number two? A notebook. To the right of the notebook, we have a backpack, a cube, and a pencil. Which object is heavier than the notebook, the backpack, the cube, or the pencil? The backpack is heavier than the notebook. Now let's take a look at number three. You see a marker. To the right of the marker is a notebook, a paper clip, and a bottle of paint. Which object is lighter than the marker? The paper clip is lighter than the marker. Now let's look at number four. Number four, you see a pink eraser. To the right of the eraser is a counter, a stapler, and some tape. Which object is lighter than the eraser? A single counter, a stapler, or a roll of tape? The counter is lighter than the eraser. Great job. The very last thing that you need to do for math this week is uh, click the Kahoot link that was sent out and enter your name and play the game. It is a short six question quiz and it will discuss different weights, length, and height. Please complete that by Wednesday May 20th. The link will be sent out through Dojo. Thank you.
Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.